Hello everyone, how are you all? This is your friend C. Rohit Grover and here I am, your faculty for TA final paper number 3, Advanced Auditing and Professional Ethics. So, friends, I just wanted to clarify one thing, like there is a recent amendment which has come in a very important chapter called Audit Committee and Corporate Governance. So, I think we all are aware about that particular amendment, but that amendment when you look at the uh, revisionary test paper when you look at the RTP of the May 2020 so basically that amendment is not for November 2020 it did not it, it did not get introduced for the November 2020 it was already introduced for the May 2020 but as we all know that unfortunately the May examinations have not taken place so just because the May examinations have not taken place so that's why this amendment becomes highly 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 important when it comes to the November 2020 examination, right? So, sir, looking at the picture in front of you, only you all might have understood that this particular amendment is relating to okay, what if, what if the statutory auditor of the listed entity resigns? What this amendment is all about? What if the statutory auditor of the listed company resigns or its material subsidiary? statutory auditor also resigns so here we are going to cover not only for the listed entity we are going to cover the provisions relating to statutory auditor of the listed entity as well as the statutory auditor of its material subsidiary also now say for example something wrong has happened am i correct or not now as you all know that section number 132 is becoming very prevalent nowadays I, I don't know how many of you are aware about this section or not. The name of the section is known as NFRA, right or not? National Financial Reporting Authority. We might have seen that in the month of July, so many punishments have been incurred or so many punishments have been imposed on the auditors of Deloitte or on the auditors of PwC. And why it is happening? Because unethical practices were happening in the listed entities. So, what this provision is basically all about, what this amendment is basically all about, in this amendment, we are going to cover very, very important aspects. Now, what are the three major things we are going to cover in this amendment, particularly, suppose if the statutory auditor of a listed company, first of all, sir, to which chapter it belongs? It is an amendment belonging to the chapter called Audit Committee and Corporate Governance. So, what is the amendment? This amendment says that if the statutory auditor of the listed company resigns, are you getting the point? If the statutory auditor of the listed company resigns and if the statutory auditor of its material subsidiary also resigns. Point number one, statutory auditor of the listed entity resigns and statutory auditor of its material subsidiary also resigned. So either of the two case, either the statutory auditor of the listed entity resigned or the statutory auditor of the material subsidiary resigned, then what is the responsibility of that listed company? What is the responsibility of the audit committee of that listed company? And what is the responsibility of the auditor? Are you understanding the point? So what is the auditor of that listed company whose auditor has resigned? What is the responsibility of the audit committee of that listed entity whose auditor has resigned? And most importantly, what is the responsibility of that auditor also who has resigned? Are you understanding the point or not? So this is basically, we are going to understand about the responsibility of the listed entity, responsibility of the audit committee and the responsibility of the auditor himself. If he resigns from what, sir, if he resigns from that particular listed entity or from its material subsidiary. Now, before going into the resignation, before going into the resignation, let us go back to section number 140, subsection 2 and subsection 3, which were available in the Companies Act. Sir, why suddenly Companies Act has been introduced here? We are to going to talk about LODR. For those who don't know, what do you mean by LODR? When you will read this chapter called Audit Committee and Corporate Governance, LODR stands for Listing Obligations and Disclosure Requirements. These listing obligation and disclosure requirements are not applicable to every company. They are only applicable to whom? They are only applicable to whom? They are applicable only to the listed entities. 
So in the audit committee in corporate governance chapter, everything is relating to listed entities. Then sir, why you are talking about section number 140, subsection 2 and subsection 3 of the companies have because those sections also talks about the resignation of an auditor. So let's let just quickly just have an idea okay, what section number 140 subsection 2 and what section number 140 subsection 3 were talking about. Section number 140 subsection 2 if we remember it was talking about the resignation of an auditor. If the auditor resigns, if the auditor resigns willingly from a company then it is his responsibility that okay, within the 30 days of his resignation within the 30 days of his resignation he should ensure that the reasons of his resignation must be intimated to the authorities so within the 30 days of the resignation the reasons of his resignation must be intimated to the authority sir what do you mean by authority here if you were an auditor of a non government company and you resigned then the authority is company and roc so within 30 days you have to intimate the reasons of your resignation to the company and to the roc in form number in form number adt3 what is the form number adt3 and in case you were an auditor of a government company and you are resigning within 30 days you should have intimated it to whom the cnag comptroller and auditor general of india again within 30 days in form number adt3 what reasons of resignation this is what was written in the companies act 2013 now what they are saying that ki companies act 2013 provision is also applicable to listed entities because listed entity means company only na so companies act 2013 provisions to already applicable it means you have to intimate it to the say cnag and you have to intimate to the roc you have to intimate it to the company but along with that along with that if you are a listed entity if you are which entity listed company you also have to intimate about the resignation of your auditor sir which auditor statutory auditor to whom to the stock exchange also you all have to intimate about the resignation of your auditor of a listed company to whom stock exchange also so the new amendment is no more only to the cnag or a company or an roc who is the fourth person also included stock exchanges also so if you are a listed company you have to intimate the reasons of resignation of your statutory auditor and that your statutory auditor has resigned within 24 hours sir 24 hours means what is it the 24 hours from the resignation no within 24 hours from receiving the reasons of resignation from the auditor are you getting the point so you have to intimate to the stock exchange as a listed company within 24 hours sir 24 hours will start from where from the moment you receive the reasons of resignation from the auditor once the company received the reasons of resignation from the auditor within 24 hours such reasons and such intimation must be given to the stock exchange within 24 hours clear everyone that is the major idea major amendment what we are going to understand now the question is sir why stock exchange has been involved what is the reason it's a very simple thing sir we are talking about a listed company today now when the listed company's statutory auditor resigns think logically from the macro point of view listed company means what lakhs and lakhs of people have trusted this company lakhs and lakhs of people have financial interest in this company lakhs and lakhs of investors have invested their hard-earned money in this company don't you think that they will be in the worrying situation don't you think that the investors will be worried don't you think that lenders will be worried don't you think that stakeholders will be worried okay, why the statutory auditor of this particular listed company has resigned let me give you an example say for example tomorrow news comes ki statutory auditor of reliance in a limited has resigned don't you think that all the shareholders of the reliance in a limited will be worried ki what thing has happened in the company that the statutory auditor has resigned investors point of view investors concern is highly important therefore sebi under its LODR regulations made an amendment what is amendment okay, if your statutory auditor is resigning sir as a listed company or as a material subsidiary then you have to intimate the reasons of the resignation intimate the resignation of your statutory auditor to the stock exchange within 24 hours the moment you receive 
the resignations reasons of resignation from your auditor so within 24 hour when you have received it within 24 hours stock exchange also must know that ki that your statutory auditor has resigned but that is not the only amendment that is not the only amendment there are so many things which we have to understand inside that what is the responsibility of the auditor in that case what is the responsibility of the audit committee in that case what is the responsibility of the listed company in that case all those things we have to understand one by one so each and every word directly it's a copy paste of rtp wording what is written in your rtp directly i have copy pasted here and each and every word relating to the rtp i'm going to discuss so i'm going i'm posting this video on the youtube why the only reason is so that students can get benefited about this amendment because so many of us or so many of the student community is still unaware about some small small issues which we have to cover in this particular amendment and as you know that rohit grover sir is not at all going to leave even a single word unread or even a single page unturned each and every word especially i already tell to my existing students ki sir when you are doing this audit committee and corporate governance chapter the only thing is you have to make sure that each and every word must be read i hope all of you understood the introduction of this amendment so what is the introduction of this amendment resignation of statutory auditor from the listed entity and their material subsidiaries so what that that particular thing is saying so first we are talking about what auditor's responsibility under the companies act as i already discussed with you so we need not discuss that in detail as per section number 140 subsection 2 specify the procedure to be followed by the auditor when he or she resigns from the company procedure says that to file the statement in the prescribed form sir everyone please tell me what is that prescribed form sir adt3 we have to file with the, the company and the roc within how many days sir within 30 days within how many days we have to file it sir within 30 days from the date of resignation we have to file so file a statement in the prescribed form with the company and the roc within how many days sir within 30 days from the date of resignation and for the government companies i already told you for the central government or state government companies the same reasons of resignation are required to be filed by the auditor to the c and ag in the form adt3 within 30 days from his resignation so that is what all is being told in this first paragraph so you can say that basically this paragraph is completely dedicated to which provision companies act provision which we have already covered earlier and i already told you in the beginning of this particular topic also and in that form what will be written statement should indicate the reasons and the other facts as may be relevant with respect to such a resignation so this we need not do because this is the responsibility of the auditor under the which act under the company's act but are we doing it under the company's act no we are understanding the responsibility of the auditor under the lodr regulation let us understand responsibility of the entity under sebi LODR regulations 2015. So it is a very, very, very important amendment, sir. So what this amendment is basically saying? This amendment is saying that, sir, from the 1st April 2019 onwards. What is the date? From the 1st April 2019 onwards, in any listed entity, if the statutory auditor of that listed entity or its material subsidiaries or and its material subsidiaries series leaves or resigns the listed entity and its material subsidiary then it is the responsibility of that listed entity to inform to the stock exchange within 24 hours from the reasons received from such auditor now this is what is written in this whole paragraph so that we already know from 1st april 2019 the security exchange board of india via its lodr listing obligation and disclosure requirements 2015 cast a responsibility on the listed entity didn't i tell you that we have to understand the responsibility of listed entity now what is the responsibility of listed entity in relation to an auditor's resignation so what is that responsibility the listed entities are required to disclose the detailed reasons to whom to the stock exchange to the which exchange to the stock exchange where there is a resignation by an auditor as soon as possible but not later than 24 hours of receipt of such reasons from that auditor the moment you receive the reasons from the auditor why he is resigning within 24 hours that must be intimated to the stock exchange that's it 
दिस इज वॉट द टाइम पीरियड तो सर लेट अस राइट वॉट इज द टाइम पीरियड द लिस्टेड एंटिटी नो वॉट इज द टाइम पीरियड हियर द लिस्टेड एंटिटी मस्ट इनफॉर्म स्टॉक एक्सचेंज द लिस्टेड एंटिटी मस्ट इनफॉर्म द स्टॉक एक्सचेंज वॉट दैट देर ऑडिटर has resigned with the reasons sir when the listed entity will be able to give the reasons to the stock exchange when the listed entity itself will receive the reasons of resignation so when to be informed when to be informed within 24 hours from within 24 Hours from the moment it received reasons of resignation from their auditor. So remember one thing, guys. Always remember one thing. It will take some time to complete this amendment, sir. A ki to amendment hai. Why you think that ki 45 minutes to one hour is required, sir? Each and every word is required to be understood. Try to understand my point very clearly. Leaving the video in between is going to be your loss. You are going to lose some important interpretations, some important points which you never ever given importance to. That is what the problem with the student community. So that's the reason people like us have to come up with the responsibility to make sure that ki bhaiya, this particular point is also very important from the examination point of view. Clear everyone? So we understood the page number one. In the page number one, we understood what is the responsibility of resignation as per Company Act 2013, and what is the responsibility of the listed entity if the statutory auditor resigns? Now aspects to be covered to all listed entities. What is the next topic, sir? Aspects to be covered. in circular to all the listed entity now what the sebi says that what is actually written in that circular sebi has issued a circular clarifying mandatory condition to be complied with when the statutory auditor of a listed entity or its material subsidiary resigns in relation to limited review audit report and the circular issued by the sebi comes into with the special effect now listen to this very carefully listen to this very carefully they are saying that It, this is mandatory circular and the moment it came the moment it came from that immediate effect only this circular is applicable why because it is all about the concern of the outsiders investors lenders stakeholders don't you think that we have to keep them informed if they are statutory auditor of the listed entity in which they have invested or lended the money at that person has resigned so there might be some problematic things which might be going on in their mind so for the removal of the doubt stock exchange co listed entity will inform it to the stock exchange and stock exchange will inform it to its investors by publishing it so when this amendment came sir this amendment came on october 18 2019 when this amendment came sir october 18 2019 this amendment came and with immediate effect it is applicable and remember and remember those companies in which audit committee is not constituted those companies where in which what audit committee is not constituted then in that case board of directors will take care of this compliance generally this is the compliance applicable on which committee sir audit committee as we all know that audit committee is mandatorily required to be constituted in a listed entity but still sebi has clarified that ki in such companies if the audit committee is not constituted then who will take care of this responsibility board of directors generally the whole responsibility relating to resignation of the statutory auditor is lying on the shoulders of whom audit committee but in case audit committee is not there the whole responsibility lies on the shoulders of whom on the board of directors so what they are saying now see that in case an auditor in case an audit, uh, entity is not required to form a co or constitute an audit committee then the board of directors of the entity are required to ensure compliance with this circular that is what i told you so they are saying that generally it is a responsibility of audit committee but if audit committee is not constituted then everyone please try to fill in the blanks then board of directors must comply that is what written in this particular topic 
then in that case board of directors must comply with that clear everyone now what are the aspects to be covered what are the conditions to be complied with what are the procedures to be followed and what are the obligations of listed entity and its subsidiary now now we are going to understand this particular amendment in detail now very much in detail we are going to understand now listen to this little bit tricky part now we are going to first understand auditor's responsibility what auditor has to do then we'll understand audit committee's responsibility and then we'll understand listed entities responsibility each and every what we, what we are going to discuss in the next half an hour 45 minutes of discussion it is highly important right now what the cv has said so what i will do is i will make sure that i will read each and every word and i will put my interpretation in that and i'll write it on the left side of that so that all of you can make a note of it in a very important and a beautiful manner now sebi has also clarified that in case the auditor is rendered disqualified due to the operation of any condition mentioned in section number 141 of this act then the provision of this circular would not be applicable now what they are saying that everyone please tell me companies act section number companies act section number 141 talks about what 141 subsection 3 talks about what disqualification and 140 subsection 2 or subsection 3 talks about what sir resignation of an auditor it means the sebi has very much clarified in this point that ki if it is a resignation case then this sebi circular is what optional or mandatory then the whole provision what we are going to understand is mandatory but in case the auditor left in case the auditor left due to disqualifications under section 141 subsection 3 in case the auditor left due to disqualifications under section 141 subsection 3 then this circular is not applicable in that case are you guys understanding the depth of the provision so sebi has clarified that ki bhaiya, if it is resignation then this circular is applicable if this is not a case of resignation if this is a case of disqualification then this circular is not applicable so we will read the point to point thing and i'll make sure that i'm writing the notes in you know opposite to that you just pause the video make a notes and make sure that you are doing this particular amendment in the same way which in which i want to teach you right sir next word conditions to be complied while appointing or reappointing an auditor now let me just first tell you what is my understanding says then we'll see our understanding in the particular video or in the particular provision also so let me take some notes for you all of you now what they're saying that let's take an example ki 2021 financial year is going on so which financial year is going on 2021 financial year going on so this is the total 2021 financial year right so this is 1st april 2020 and this is 31st march 2021 correct this is a 2021 financial now listen to this we have to divide it into four equal quarters so quarter number one quarter number two quarter number three so are we able to see the first quarter the first quarter is ending on 30th june 2020 third quarter is ending on 30th September 2020 and then 31 12 2020 and then that quarter right now so this is Q1 so let us understand this is Q1 this is Q2 this is Q3 this is Q4 now try to understand this provision very important highly important provision they are saying that in case the auditor in case the auditor now listen to this let's do the half of this quarter assuming that quarter is having 90 days assuming that the quarter is having 90 days if an auditor if uh, the statutory auditor of what of listed entity or its material subsidiary now listen to the point number one if the statutory auditor of a listed entity or its material subsidiary is leaving is resigning within 45 days 
from the end of quarter they are saying that if the statutory auditor of the listed company or the material subsidiary is resigning within how many days 45 days it means we are talking about these 45 days we are talking about these 45 days within 45 days from the end of the quarter now which quarter they are talking about so as per our example within 45 days from q1 so are you understanding the point so within the 45 days from the end of the quarter sir when the quarter is ending the quarter is ending on 30th june 2020 within 45 days means what okay within 15 july within 15 august sorry within 15 august 2020 45 days within 45 days means what sir quarter one is ending when 30th june 2020 within 45 days to so add 45 days maximum within 15 august so within 15 august from 1st july to 15 august so it means from 1st july to 15 august if the statutory auditor is resigning then what is the statutory auditor's responsibility then what is the statutory auditor's responsibility he has to ensure that he shall complete audit or limited review or and issue report on previous quarter before resigning correct everyone what they are saying that ki if the auditor is leaving within the 45 days from the end of the quarter then he is responsible to do the audit or complete the audit of that previous quarter and do the limited review of that previous quarter and must issue the auditor's report or limited review report before leaving and before resigning are you getting the point now the situation is very different here so what is the situation number two if the statutory auditor of listed company or material subsidiary sir resigns when resigns after 45 days from the end of quarter sir after 45 days from the end of the quarter means what okay, now i am talking about this thing now i am talking about these 45 days so first 45 days and the second 45 days it means now i'm talking about these 45 days so if the auditor is leaving here now now when the auditor was leaving here then this provision is applicable now the auditor is leaving in the next 45 days in the next 45 days any days so first of all so let us write what are the next 45 days the next 45 days means what so 16 august 2020 to 30th september 2020 tak. in within these days if the auditor is leaving within these 45 days then there is a different obligation on the auditor so what is the obligation on the auditor in this case auditor auditor's responsibility is what sir in this case auditor's responsibility is to do audit or limited review and issue report for previous quarter that is there for the quarter which you have already completed that quarter audit report or limited review report you have to issue for the previous quarter but along with that auditor must complete audit or limited review of such quarter also in which he is leaving in which he is leaving and must issue what a report for the same are you getting the point the same sir what do you mean by that now listen to this in case of red area sir what was red area he was leaving within 45 days first 45 days from the end of the quarter 
in this only quarter number one was the responsibility of a leaving auditor but now in this case he is leaving where sir in this case he is leaving in the next 45 days in the next 45 days it means from the 46th day onwards to the 90th day of next quarter if he is leaving in next 45 days then in that case quarter one plus quarter two both will be his responsibility and this rule is applicable everywhere this rule is applicable everywhere now suppose the same thing happens here now let's take an example if the same thing happens here let's take an example this is the half of quarter three are you getting the point if the same thing happens here he leaves in these 45 days if he leaves in these 45 days now what will happen everyone if he leaves in these 45 days now what will happen if he leaves in these 45 days then the auditor's responsibility is what quarter one plus quarter two but if he leaves in these 45 days then the auditor's responsibility is only quarter one quarter two or it is a responsibility of quarter one plus quarter two plus quarter three so if you are leaving in the first 45 days of the next quarter then previous quarter is your responsibility but if you are living in the next 45 days of the next quarter next 45 days of that quarter then previous quarter and the quarter in which you are living that is your responsibility so it means here as per the example here the auditor is leaving in the third quarter after 45 days then in that case quarter one quarter two quarter three all three will be his responsibility but if he leaves in these 45 days then in that case quarter one and quarter two only will be his responsibility when it comes to the audit or the limited review this is what is being written here but what is the third point being talked third point is completely different so what is the third point so third point may what the act is saying in the third point they are saying that if the auditor leaves at any point of time in the last quarter if the auditor is resigning at any point of time in the last quarter in the which quarter in the last quarter to try to remember in the first quarter to if he leaves then it is a previous year case in the quarter two if he is leaving in the first 45 days in the next 45 days that is a different issue in the quarter three if he is leaving in the first 45 days in the next 45 days that i already told you but if the auditor is leaving at any point of time in the last quarter of the financial year then in that case what will happen in that case the auditor's responsibility is what auditor's responsibility is for quarter one plus quarter two plus quarter three you already plus quarter four as well as yearly audit or limited review report are you getting the point then in that case you have to complete your assignment for the full year if you are leaving the last quarter means from january 1st to 31st march at any point of time you are leaving in 2021 then in that case quarter one quarter two quarter three so already you might have done the quarter four also you have to do and the full year audit report and the full year limited review report also you have to give this is what the whose responsibility sir this is what the auditor's responsibility are you getting the point or not yes sir we got our point so this is what the next 45 days point this is what the first 45 paid points so can i see that these two situations are applicable in quarter two and quarter three but if the auditor is leaving at any point of time in the quarter number four then in that case full year audit and limited review is compulsory so this is what the understanding you have to make sure are you getting the point or not now let us read what is written in the amendment and let us see whether we are able to interpret the amendment given by the LODR regulations or not. Now what is the amendment saying? So instead of writing it here because that was not possible on the left side to be written that's why it is written here. So along with that these notes also will be shared with you right. Everyone please try to understand. If the auditor resigns within the 45 days from the end of the quarter it means we are talking about the second quarter but the first 45 days of the financial year then the auditor should before resignation issue the limited review or audit report of 
such quarter are you getting the point right if the auditor resigns after 45 days from the end of the quarter of financial year then the auditor should before resignation issue the limited review audit report of such quarter as well as the next quarter it means the quarter in which he is leaving that quarter audit report as well as the quarter which he has already completed both the quarters are responsibility notwithstanding anything above now it is talking about the last quarter if the auditor has resigned the lim it, uh, auditor has resigned the limited review and audit report for the first three quarters of the financial year then the auditor before resignation issue the limited audit review of the last quarter of such financial year as well as the audit report for the such financial year if you are leaving at any point of time in the last quarter then the already three quarters report you have already might have given plus that last quarter report also you have to give what audit and limited review report plus the full year audit report also you have to issue this is what the responsibility this is what sir so this is what the responsibility of let us write so this is what the responsibility of statutory auditor of listed entity and its material subsidiary clear everyone so that brings an end to up to this much of amendment right or not major thing was that only ki what is the obligation on the auditor to again, again repeat kar lete hain if you are leaving in the second quarter but in the second quarter you are leaving within the first 45 days then you have to issue the audit report or limited review report of the previous quarter but if you are leaving in the second quarter but in the next 45 days of that quarter then the previous quarter audit report and this quarter which you are leaving that audit report is also your responsibility and this is applicable for the second quarter and the third quarter same but if you are leaving at any point of time in the fourth quarter then the first three quarters so already you might have done the audit or limited review then that quarter in which you are leaving that is the fourth quarter that quarter report also you have to give and the full financial year report also you have to give this is what the responsibility of the statutory auditor of a which entity listed entity and the total purpose the total concept is written in the right side of this video so make sure that you just shut down the video for a moment of time or just when you are reading this video make it on the slower pace and start writing along with me right now procedures to be followed in relation to resignation of an auditor so in case the auditor gives the resignation what is the procedure to be followed by the listed entity and its material subsidiary in case of any concern with the management of the listed entity its material subsidiary such that non availability of the information non cooperation by the management which may hamper the audit the auditor should approach the chairman of the audit committee of the listed entity the audit committee should receive such concern directly and immediately without specifically waiting for the quarterly audit meeting what basically they are saying that basically in this particular topic they are saying that ki if the auditor is resigning due to the non cooperation what he has received from the management or due to the non availability of the evidences which he has demanded from the management so basically they are saying that ki in case in case the auditor is resigning in case the auditor is resigning Sir, what can be the reason of rising? Either non-cooperation by management. Suppose the auditor was expecting some good cooperation from the management of that listed entity or material subsidiary, but that management was not ready to cooperate. Plus, or there might be a case of non-availability of information demanded from management. Are you getting the point? in case the auditor is resigning due to any of these two reasons due to any of these two reasons then in that case then in that case what will happen the auditor then in that case what will happen the auditor should directly approach the auditor should directly approach to the chairman of audit committee he will directly approach directly approach to the chairman of audit committee and the chairman of the audit committee has to take an immediate action chairman of the audit committee has to take an immediate action sir immediate action required because it's a very big concern why the management is not cooperating with the auditor why the management is not giving the information what the statutory auditor is asking then in that case it is a responsibility of that auditor that make this complaint directly to the chairman of the audit committee chairman of the audit committee has to take the immediate action but not later than it's 
but not later than its quarterly audit committee meeting so audit committee basically should not wait for its quarterly audit committee meeting and take the action immediately that is what is being given now let us read what they are trying to tell so they are saying that okay, now listen in case of any concern with the management of the listed entity or material subsidiary as a non availability of information either they have not given you any information or they have shown you any non cooperation by the management which may hamper the audit process and the auditor should approach directly to the chairman of the audit committee of that listed entity the audit committee should receive such concern directly and immediately without specifically waiting for the quarterly audit committee meetings immediately it is the responsibility of the audit committee immediately they should take the action and make sure that the problem is resolved if it is resolvable if the problem is not huge then the audit committee will try its all level best to resolve the problem immediately in case the auditor proposes to resign in case the auditor proposes to resign all concerns with respect to the proposed resignation along with the relevant documentation should be brought to the notice of the audit committee in such cases where the proposed resignation is due to non receipt of information or explanation from the company auditor should inform the in audit committee the details of information explanation sought and not provided by the management so what they are saying that in case in the first point they were saying ki in case the auditor has not received the information from the management or non cooperation from the management directly he will go to whom audit committee and make a complaint audit committee will take the immediate action but in case the auditor thinks of resigning in case the auditor is thinking of resigning and the reason of resignation and the reason of resignation is what non cooperation or non availability of information then in that case then in that case audit committee then in that case audit committee has to do what so what is written in the provision then in that case audit committee of the date date in sort and on. now in such case what the audit committee will do audit committee will immediately take an action so basically what is the difference in the point number 1 and point number 2 in the point number 2 in the point number 1 auditor is directly going to the audit committee and saying that ki your management is not cooperating with me and your management is not providing me the information please take the needful action then the audit committee directly will take the action but if the auditor thinks that ki resignation is the only option now still after the audit committee has taken the so many initiatives still management is non cooperative in nature and still the management is not giving me the evidences then the auditor should give the total proposal of his resignation to whom audit committee and saying that ki bhaiya i am resigning please take care of your entity that is what is written in the point number 2 now what is happening in the point number 3 on receipt of such information on receipt of such information from the auditor relating to proposal or resign as mentioned above the audit committee board of directors as the case may be should deliberate on the matter and communicate their views to the management and auditor then the point number 3 may what they are saying that ki on receipt of proposal of resignation from statutory auditor then what the audit committee has to do so basically we are doing the responsibilities of the audit committee now sir auditor responsibility in the above we understood about the 45 days 45 days and all those things now we are talking about the audit committee responsibility so first audit committee should take the necessary action if the auditor complained about the management's non cooperation and non availability of information in the second case audit committee is receiving the proposal proposal of resignation in the third point what the audit committee is saying on receipt of proposal of resignation from the statutory auditor audit committee or board of directors shall communicate the same to the ki management ki bhaiya due to your non cooperation and due to non availability of the information what he was seeking and you have not provided our auditor is leaving the company this is what the auditor this is what the responsibility of the audit committee now there is a very important point very 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 important point he is saying that if the auditor if the auditor does not resign if the auditor does not resign in the first case we are understanding that sir auditor resigns 
but in case the auditor does not resign then what the auditor should do then it is a responsibility of the statutory auditor that he should give the appropriate disclaimer of opinion as per SA705 revised. Clear everyone? Point number one, management is not cooperating, management is not providing the availability and auditor thinks that no, I will not resign. Now what the auditor will do? In that case, the statutory auditor with the help of proper, uh, like uh, if he thinks that the possible effects of that non-availability of the sufficient and appropriate uh, audit evidence is having both materiality and pervasiveness in that case he should give the appropriate disclaimer opinion sir when do we give the disclaimer opinion as per 705 when there is a non-availability of the evidence and the auditor thinks that ki the possible effects of such non-availability of the audit evidence or non-availability of that information could be both material as well as what pervasive then in that case he will give the disclaimer of opinion as per SA 705 revised clear everyone yes sir we understood right so see in case of listed and its material subsidiary does not provide information required for the auditor then to the extent the auditor should provide an appropriate disclaimer in the audit report that disclaimer should be in accordance with the standard on auditing so what standard of auditing SA 705 who makes it sir ICAI makes it but nowadays who is taking a toll over the ICA NFRA so you have to write the standards on auditing which are specified by ICA or NFRA other procedures now listen to this auditor left auditor left now do you have to reappoint the another auditor or not do you have to appoint the new auditor or not so remember one thing that when you are appointing the new auditor when you are appointing the new auditor in the place of resigned auditor, you have to make sure that the company should first only define some rules and regulations in the terms of appointment. It means the new auditor should already have the knowledge why the previous auditor has left and company wants the new auditor to know about this situation and everything should be noted in his terms of appointment itself only. That is what is written. Now see what the standard is saying. Standard is saying that a listed entity or its material subsidiary is required to ensure that the listed entity or its material subsidiary is required to ensure that all the above conditions as mentioned for appointing, reappointing of an auditor procedure to be followed in relation to designation are included in the terms of appointment of a statutory auditor at the time of appointment or reappointment of an auditor. So when you are appointing so here they are saying that ki when audit committee or board of directors are appointing new auditor, they are appointing new auditor, then every information about above resign, above resigned auditor must be already included in the terms of appointment of new auditor so when you are appointing the new auditor make sure that new auditor is already aware of why the previous auditor has resigned so basically this is what they are taking taking said telling in this particular point certificate of compliance now what do you mean by certificate of compliance so we have to go to one now Remember one thing, wherever the word called compliance is coming out, remember practicing company secretary should come to your mind. Now, a practicing company secretary is required to certify the compliance of provisions of circular by the listed entity as mentioned above in their annual secretary compliance report. So, you have to have hire a practicing CS and practicing CS in its secretarial audit report. will report that that SEBI LODR regulation has been complied by listed entity clear so it is the responsibility that keep practicing company secretary in his secretarial audit report should give an assurance that yes the particular circular of the SEBI has been complied by this 
लिस्टेड एंटिटी नेक्स्ट पॉइंट सर ऑब्लिगेशन ऑफ द लिस्टेड एंटिटी एंड इट्स मेटीरियल सब्सिडरी तो वी अंडरस्टूड द ऑब्लिगेशन ऑफ ऑडिटर 45 days and all. We also understood the obligation of the audit committee in that. And now we are going to understand the obligation of the listed entity and its material subsidiary if the statutory auditor is resigning. That we already know. That we already know. So what is that? What is the obligation, bhai? First one. The circular prescribes the following formats and the disclosures to be filed by a listed entity and its material subsidiary to the stock exchange. Do you remember that ki the listed entity and the material subsidiary has to ensure that ki within 24 hours from the reasons received from the auditor, reasons received from auditor, we have to inform to the stock exchange within 24 hours. But how to inform, in which way to be informed, that we have to understand. So now the topic name is known as Format of information to be obtained from the statutory auditor upon resignation. What kind of information we are looking from the auditor? What kind of information we want from the auditor? Ki bhaiya, why you are resigning? That we have to understand here. Now, see. An extra A of the circular specifies the format in which the listed entity material uh, subsidiary should obtain information from the auditor on resignation. The format includes information to be filed by the statutory auditor as such. Detailed reasons for resignation. First of all, the auditor has to mention in his statement that ki why he is resigning. Detailed reasons of his resignation. Details of association with the listed entity and its material subsidiary. That he is working in which capacity with that listed entity and material subsidiary. Third, whether the inability to obtain the information or inability to get a non-cooperation from management is the actual reason ki why he is leaving. So whether the inability to obtain the sufficient and appropriate audit data was due to the management imposed limitation or circumstances beyond the control of management. So he has to tell that if whether he has to tell that if whether the imposition made by the management was intentional, whether the limitation on his scope made by the management was intentional or it was beyond the control of the management, that information also auditor has to give. And whether the lack of information would have significant impact on the financial information statements or not. Whatever the information he was asking from the management and the management did not provide that information. Is that effect, is there any effect of that non-availability of the information on the financial statements or not? That also auditor has to specify and whether the auditor has performed alternative procedures to obtain the appropriate evidence for the purpose of audit or limited review or not. Whether auditor also applied any alternative procedure to obtain the evidence from the different point of view or not and whether the lack of information was prevalent in the previous reported financial statement or result if yes on what basis the previous audit limited reports were issued and any other facts relevant to the resignation so basically what they are saying that even an statutory auditor is resigning when the statutory auditor is resigning, sir, when the statutory auditor is resigning, then what is happening? Then in that case, listed company or material subsidiary must obtain following information from such statutory auditor. Now, what information you have to obtain? from the statutory auditor before resignation that is what is written in the circular sir information number one. i told you now there are so many things which you are not even aware of what if the question will come on this way then in that case you will curse the people like us who are the poor faculties and you will say that faculty has not covered any point now point number one what kind of information we need from the statutory auditor sir point number one sir what is the point number one detailed reasons of resignation Sir, point number two, association with the listed entity and material subsidiary. Point number three, whether non-availability of information from management was intentionally done by management. intentionally done by management or it was beyond 
the control of management it was beyond the control of management next whether such non available information impacts the financial statements or not right next whether auditor tried to obtain such information which was not provided by the management with some other alternatives or not the point number 6 whether such a non available information impacted previous years financial statements or not and point number 7 any other relevant information so remember one thing before allowing the auditor to resign from the listed entity it is the responsibility of the listed entity to get these seven informations from the statutory auditor and auditor has to provide these seven informations to the listed entity i hope everyone is crystal clear yes further a declaration further a declaration of the above information needs to be given by the statute that information so provided is correct and complete and there is no material reasons for resignation other than those provided above that the statutory auditor and here they are saying that the auditor the auditor must also declare the auditor must also declare that above information is true and correct whatever the information is giving above is true and correct and there is no other information responsible for his for his resignation it means he is indirectly saying that ki bhaiya what is written above is the only reason for my resignation other than that there is no other extra information due to which i am resigning so there is no other information responsible for his resignation who is giving this declaration auditors declaring i hope so far everyone understood what amendment this is all about what this amendment is all about i hope all of you are understanding now cooperation by the listed company and its material subsidiary now see what they are saying that during the period from when the auditor proposes to resign now listen to this very carefully do you know that auditor is going to resign within 45 days then he has to take care of the previous quarter only if in the next 45 days he has to take care of the previous quarter as well as the current quarter now listen to this once the company will come to know that generally what happens once the company will come to know that ki their auditor is resigning don't you think that the company will be angry yes they will stop supporting that auditor but as sebi circular is saying that ki even if your auditor is resigning and you already know that he is resigning and he is still doing his limited audit review or he is still doing his the audit for that particular quarter in which he has for given the proposal for his resignation it is the responsibility of the listed company and its material subsidiary to support in every manner to that outgoing auditor even though they know that he is going he is proposed to resign he has already proposed to resign but for the at least till the time he is not resigning till the time he is not leaving the company till the time he has not completed his responsibility which we have discussed about the particular listed entity and its material subsidiary make sure that they are cooperating with the auditor like in general only correct so during the period from when the auditor proposes to resign till the auditor submits the report for such quarterly financial year as specified above the listed entity and its material subsidiary are required to continue to provide all such documents information as may be necessary for that purpose it means full cooperation full cooperation is sought between 
proposal of resignation and completion till the time he has not completed his task full cooperation is required to be given by the this company now disclosure of the views of the audit committee to the stock exchange that we already know upon the resignation now what is the provision upon the resignation by an auditor the auditor committee should deliberate upon all the concerns raised by the auditor with respect to the resignation but not later than the date of its next audit committee meeting that we have already understood if once the audit committee comes to know that yes their particular auditor is going to resign without fail without waiting they should make sure that ki immediate action and corrective measures are being taken or at least they should report it to the management ki bhaiya our statutory auditor is resigning the views of the audit committee should be communicated to the management listed entity should ensure the disclosure of the views of the audit committee to the stock exchange as soon as but not later than 24 hours after the date of such audit committee meeting so views of the audit see this is not the intimation of reasons of resignation that is intimation of reason of resignation by the listed entity and material subsidiary to the stock exchange within 24 hours from the moment the receive they receive the reasons of resignation that is different this is different this is the views of audit committee are you getting the point or not so basically what they are doing basically what they are saying now see once the audit committee comes to know that their stat auditor is resigning resigning then immediately by the next audit committee meeting they should put their views on that and communicate it to management and ensure that their views on such incident must also be filed with whom stock exchange within 24 within 24 hours of audit committee meeting within 24 hours from the conclusion of that audit committee meeting that's what they are saying that the listed entity must shall ensure to disclose the views of the audit committee to the stock exchange as soon as possible but not later than 24 hours after the date on of such audit committee meeting within 24 hours after the date it is written after the date of such audit committee meeting it is written that suppose the audit committee meeting gets over on 16 august then in that case from 17 August, in the whole 24 hours, they have to make sure that ki they should inform this information to the stock exchange. So, listed entity has to inform two things to the stock exchange basically. What are the two things? Listed entity has to inform the reasons of resignation within 24 hours, the moment they receive. And they also have to inform the views of audit committee to the within 24 hours from the day on which the audit committee meeting got ended. And this all is required to be responsibility of which entity it's a listed entity and its material subsidiary clear everyone and these both are required to be filed with whom stock exchange correct everyone so this brings an end to this particular topic now responsibility of the auditor under sebi loda regulations with ICA implementation guide what they are saying that is SEBI has already uh, told some responsibilities of an auditor and ICA also has issued one guidance note on such kind of issues. So what they are saying that yes, the 2039 requires only the auditors to communicate reasons of resignation to both company and the registrar recently SEBI has amended the listing obligation and made it mandatory for the listed entity to disclose to the stock exchange the reason of resignation within 24 hours of receipt of such a resignation and ICAI has also issued one guidance note on the same clear everyone now circumstances leading to withdrawal or resignation circumstances leading to the withdrawal or resignation what they are saying that if the auditor thinks that he disclaimer is not the option 
the only option available with him is resignation only then he should resign but sometimes what happens some laws and regulations do not allow the auditor to leave the organization they do not allow the auditor to leave the organization in that case what the auditor should do in that case at least auditor is having another power he can use that power called modified opinion he should disclaim his opinion in the auditor's report that is what is written here so what they are saying that until and unless there are circumstances there are covered by the standards on auditing sqc and the code of ethics issued by the ica where resignation is the only available alternative the auditor should complete the engagement they are saying that ki until and unless the last moment has come ki auditor has to resign if he thinks that ki yes there is a little bit of hope ki yes instead of resigning i can complete my engagement then he should complete his engagement first but if he thinks that it is completely gone out of control now he cannot manage to complete his audit or cannot manage to complete his assignment then he should resign so they are saying that unless there are circumstances of code of ethics or sqc or the required standard of auditing suggest that ki resignation is the only alternative till that time until that happens till that time auditor should try to complete his engagement if the auditor has substantially completed the audit then the auditor may decide to complete the audit to the extent possible and disclaim an opinion and explain the scope limitation with the basis of disclaimer opinion section prior to the withdrawing he is saying that if you have already substantially completed the audit but at least make sure that you should include one disclaimer opinion before resigning or before withdrawing in your auditor's report they are not forcing see sebi circular is not telling the auditor to compromise they are saying that okay leave leave but at least if you have done the substantially the part of an audit at least complete the audit give the disclaimer report so that the all users of financial statement can understand ki why the hell you have resigned from this listed entity include the disclaimer opinion paragraph before withdrawing in certain circumstances withdrawal from the audit may not be possible if the audit is required by the law or regulation to continue the audit that's what i was telling you sometimes the auditor is not allowed to withdraw he has to continue in such cases therefore advise that auditor should discharge his or her professional obligation then chup chap apna kaam karte jao disclaimer opinion paragraph already is there with you disclaim your opinion in the form of modified report in case an auditor has signed all the quarters financially except the last quarter then the auditor has to finalize the audit report for the said financial year before resignation that we already know ki if the auditor is giving the proposal of resignation in the last quarter then the first three quarters he has already completed it is his responsibility to complete the fourth quarter as well as the annual report so all those things which were discussed earlier are being again discussed here so that's why i am not write, going to write anything in other cases the auditor should resign after issuing the limited review for the previous quarter with respect to the resignation that we already know before 45 after 45 and this is what they are basically explaining again right or not so let us wind it up as soon as possible so this is nothing but the again repeated again in the what do you say material and next one comments i already told you why particularly this lodr regulation came sir why because resignation of the statutory auditor is a huge concern it is a huge concern of an you know you can say that uh, investor from the investor's point of view lender's point of view that is what is written now listed entities may take note to the circular as additional onus means it is a additional burden on them is casted on them for the disclosure of information in case of resignation of statutory auditor in the past whenever there has been any auditor resignation it impact has been quite adverse for the investors and hence in the interest of protecting the interest of the investors the rule of resignation by the auditors have been strengthened however the circular does not prohibit resignation of auditor but aims at an orderly resignation they are saying that ki bhaiya give resignation give the resignation but give orderly resignation by following all these things in between if you leave the listed company neither the company will get benefit nor you will get benefit nor the sebi will get benefit nor the investors will get benefited complete your task to the maximum possible give the resignation go with the respect go out of the company with the respect and if you have already done the three quarters proposing to resign last quarter then don't do that do the full year and then leave if you are leaving in the first 45 days of the next quarter then at least complete the previous quarter report 
and if you are leaving in the next 45 days then the previous quarter as well as what this quarter to so make sure that ki they are not prohibiting you from resigning basically the sebi is trying to strengthen this particular thing because it really affects it really affects the investors it really affects the it really affects the interest of investors so to protect and to strengthen their interest this provision has been given ki give resignation but give a which resignation orderly resignation i hope all of you understood yes sir we understood so that's it is all about a particularly talking about the resignation of internal auditor sorry resignation of statutory auditor in case of lodr regulation so that brings an end to our chapter also and that brings an end to the very 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 important amendment which the ica has recently introduced so with that i would like to take your leave and i hope that all of you understood i hope that all of you understood this amendment and each and every point now you have understood make sure that and promise me that if this question will come in the examination for 4 or 5 marks you are going to comment on my youtube channel immediately if you think that this particular question has come and if you are able to retain the various things which i have told you in this particular video so thank you so much for listening to me thank you so much for coming live or taking out your precious time to watch this video and i will again suggest that watch the full video don't leave the video in between because there are so many minor points in between so thank you so much thank you for lending your patient ears i'll again borrow your ears in the next video thank you so much bye everyone take care stay safe stay at home bye